950, the progressive voice of Minnesota, Hunter Haas and Eric Nelson here today for local Minnesota radio hour. But what if Seinfeld was still on the air today and with uh, today's media, political climate, they would have to be uh, politically engaged characters. Yeah, what if uh, Seinfeld gets an iPad? Gets an iPad? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but... Uh, so I, I think I've got each of the characters in Seinfeld pinned out to how they would fall politically. All right. I'm interested in hearing this because I think I have a pretty good idea, too. Yeah. Uh, and we'll discuss. Uh, but uh, Jerry, he would be, um, since he's a comedian and this uh, political correctness would get on his nerves, he'd be complaining about SJWs and, uh, again, political correctness. And he'd be a, a radical centrist. His uh, idols would be Joe Rogan, uh, Bill Maher, Jordan Peterson, uh, Dave Rubin. He'd be the uh, the rationality over everything type, uh, and he would have uh, he would tolerate all of his friends, who I'm going to get into, have some more extreme views. But uh, he believes that his center and cynical. This is the answer. Now, do you want my take on this, or should I wait till you've given all of yours? Let, let me do all mine, and then we'll, we'll talk right. about them. So, uh, Elaine, she'd obviously be the resistance liberal. She'd be wearing the, the pink hat. She'd be uh, caring about upcoming protests and uh, trying to get Jerry and George to attend and uh, not making any progress with that. But she she'd be the the bleeding heart of the group. Kramer, though, he would be alt-right through and through. Not only is the his character who got in trouble for uh, using racial slurs, uh, or the actor, I mean, not his character, uh, but Kramer would get drawn into the internet and be uh, thinking the Pepe posts were hilarious and uh, would just be dug deeper and deeper into the alt-right territory uh, and because his friend Newman would be a just Trump MAGA chud, even though he is a postal worker working for the government, he's the perfect example of that cognitive dissonance where his job, a government job, he's uh, against all the benefits that he's getting and fully supporting the president. And then uh, Kramer would be getting his information from his friend, Bob Sacamano. Do you remember him? He never appeared in the show, but was always oh, talked yeah. about. Bob Sacamano would be the QAnon poster, and he would get Kramer deeper into the web. So Bob Sacamano is QAnon himself? Uh, we don't know, because we, we don't know enough about okay. Bob Sacamano. But uh, that leaves George. Now, George, he would be depressed. The show would start out, he's posting on incel forums and hating life hating women having no answers because you know, george always was that way no george had too much success with women but yeah he did <laughs> but his mindset was always yeah uh failure uh but then this new movement dsa democratic socialists of america is going on and george finds out that Sorry. they want free stuff and you don't even have to go to work it's the perfect setup for him. And he joins DSA and then just gets further radicalized to a full-blown communist. So that's my take on Seinfeld and where the characters fall. But do you, uh, do you yeah, agree with me, Eric? I'm, I'm pretty close with you on a lot of them. Um, I think Jerry, like you said, would be a moderate. Mm -hmm. um, because essentially Jerry's character in the show is Jerry. I know yep. that he uh, famously donated to both uh, George Bush and Al Gore. In real life? They were running against each other. It, oh, God, that's perfect. As if it was a corporation, yeah. Yeah. And, I don't know. He's probably going to be involved in, you know, Israel in some way like he is today mm -hmm. um, against Palestine, but really no concrete political views outside of that. Um, now, Elaine, I think, is different. Okay. I remember the episode where she starts dating a Trotskyist on accident, 
<laughs> I think in this uh, universe, she's probably going to end up accidentally dating a proud boy. Ooh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. And, of course, she's going to get banned from her favorite uh, coffee establishment. Uh-huh. So she will eventually have to leave him. Yeah, um, th- I could definitely see a proud boy relationship with Elaine. Mm-hmm. Um, then we got Kramer. I think it's pretty spot on. Kramer is 100% going to get into QAnon. Mm-hmm. QAnon is custom made for a Kramer. Yeah. He can lose himself in the wild ideas, thinking he's uh, found the secret to the universe. And he'll be bringing it over to Jerry, and Jerry doesn't care because yeah. Jerry's all about rationality. Exactly. So that leaves with George. And I think George, you're right. He winds up joining the DSA, except in my <laughs> version, he does not become radicalized. Okay. He accidentally trips his way up the ladder into a position of power and then oh. eventually ends up humiliating the entire group when it turns out that he is actually basically the negative stereotype of what people think <laughs> I love socialists it. would be. Yes, yes, that's very good. Um, and... Uh, yeah, the whole dynamic of the apartment is you have Newman, the Trump MAGA guy, uh, talking with Kramer, the oh, yeah. QAnon, and them bothering Jerry. And Jerry just thinks both sides are dumb. Like, they both got it wrong. Uh, and the same, George coming to Jerry, uh, preaching about uh, DSA and how exciting it is. Uh, and it just falls flat. But I think we got a show here. Seinfeld, you want to get back in the game? Larry David, you want to do another reunion? We got the material for you. You need a script for B-Movie 2, Jerry? B-Movie 2. Got it. All right, we're going to take a break, uh, but before we do, I want to remind everyone that it is Give to the Max Day. 